Good morning everybody. Uh, my name's Corinne and I'm the owner of Corinne Thorn Glass Artist. I've been trying to make a few little tutorials recently while I'm up the studio purely because I find myself making lots of things and I just thought you know what it's really nice to share that knowledge with other people. So today what I've been playing around with is um, mixing glass with silver filings or I call it sparkly silver dust and this is actually from when I'm doing my silver work and making jewellery and it's from when I've been sawing and filing and I get left with all these little pieces here um, there are some larger pieces in here but I'm predominantly using the little dust parts from my silver work um, what I have done is because when using um, files and saws you're going to get tiny weeny fragments of, of other metals within that so I've gone through with a magnet to try and abstract anything or extract anything from that that I don't want in the glass um, so this is my little pot of filings so I don't know if any uh, all of you are aware but I use bullseye glass and within their glass ranges they actually have glass that reacts to each other depending on um, the makeup of the glass so some have copper some have sulfur um, so you can see with these where some of the colours, I'm hoping you can see that, but some of the colours have um, a little grey line around the outside and that's where the green and the turquoise is actually reacted together. So the same sort of thing happens with French vanilla and silver. Um, French vanilla reacts to quite a lot of glass and Bullseye do have a technical sheet that shows you all of their glass ranges that react together within the, the um, COE90 range. Um, so it's really good to have a, a play and see what other sort of reactions you can get. So with this, as I say, I'm going to use French vanilla, the clear and the black. The reason I'm using the clear is because uh, for those of you that aren't aware, when glass melts, it wants to go to a six mil thick. So I want a black background with the French vanilla on top and I don't want to add any other colours. And the cheapest option um, and most economical way of doing that is using a piece of clear glass so my clear glass will go on top of the black and then the French vanilla on top leaving you with a really good height so that when it goes into the kiln it doesn't spread out too much or if it's not enough layers it won't gather in taking all your papers and everything with it so I've got my three pieces the other things I've got are really um, my cutter my groziers, a brush, a very soft, clean brush. I say clean, it's still got silver in it, but I'm using silver, so it's not a problem. I've got glass tack, which I use. You can use super glue, very small amount. Some people use hairspray. I use glass tack, and it's literally just to keep the pieces of glass together um, when they're going into the kiln. The only thing with super glue, if you use too much, you may have a little fire going on inside your kiln. Don't worry about it, keep it going. Um, and the glue will burn off. The other thing I'm using today, which I picked up from, I believe it was from Warm Glass, um, are these pens here, and it is a Perfect Medium Brush Ranger pen, and it's used by people for specifically really doing embossing and powders on glass. Uh, no, <laughs> not on glass, on paper. But we're going to use it on glass so uh, it's really fantastic and um, I've just been playing around with these the downside to using them is they are clear so you can't see what you're you're drawing um, I'm not quite sure how to get around that but you just have to kind of keep an eye on what you're doing um, but when you're using this on papers you're marking out what you want you're putting your powder on top um, as a bit like putting glitter on as a kid and then sprinkle it off. So I'm doing exactly the same thing, but with the French vanilla. So I'm just gonna do a very basic swirl. So I'm hoping you can see this. So I'm just going around, hopefully not going over the line that I've already drawn. I've got my piece of paper at the moment with a crease already in it. So a bit like, again, when you do glitter as a kid and you pop your, your glue on and sprinkle it over, you can gather your glitter back up at the end. So. I'm going to take some of these filings and I'm just going to sprinkle them over the top of my piece of French vanilla. Now, I'm not worrying about those big bits because they're going to fall off. I'm just going to give it a little tap 
just to see that all of the parts that I drew on with the brush are covered a little flick just to get it all off and again I'm doing it over the paper so I don't lose any because this stuff just goes everywhere and you want to try and keep your work surface as clean as possible because any silver that you have around in your workspace that gets onto any other glass that you don't want silver on um, is actually just going to get embedded in it so you want a really really clean workspace for doing this um, if you'd seen me earlier you would have seen that I didn't have a clean workspace but I do now so I'm just going to take my very soft brush and really gently brush it over the surface really lightly just to try and clear any silver that's not attached to the swirl that I've done now even the tiniest little speck of silver will have a reaction with the French vanilla it's not major if you're not doing anything specific and it just adds to your design but the cleaner you can get it the neater your design will be so I'm hoping you can see this and I've got a swirl of silver dust on the French vanilla so all I'm going to do now is take my glass tack um, and a piece of tissue because I just want to make sure there's no rogue silver getting in the way of everything. So a piece of glass tack on here, little dot. Again, because this has been near the silver that I'm now going to move over there, I just want to give my little piece of clear glass just a little wipe just to try again make sure there's not any pieces of silver laying around on it pop that on and then again another little dollop of glass tack you don't need a lot of glass tack it's movable as well you can move it around as much as you like it just helps to hold it in place so now I'm just putting that one on there now there's a couple of ways you can do it you could do your swirl and you could pay, place a piece of clear glass over the top, um, which is called capping. And what that will do is it contains all of that silver within your design. The only thing is you won't get as much of a reaction. Um, it will probably just go a sort of a grey colour, which is beautiful in itself. Don't get me wrong. I've made quite a few pieces with just the grey piece. Um, but for this one that I'm showing you, I'm actually going to leave the silver exposed on the top. And I find with that you actually get um, a stronger reaction, but you also got to get a lot of different colorations within that design. And you'll also still see some of the little specks of silver that will still kind of shine like glitter. So this is going to go into the kiln and you can see it's, it's slightly bigger than six mil. And I'm not worried about it because it will spread just a tiny bit, but I'm not trying to be overly accurate with this anyway. So that's going to go into the kiln. So this is the one that's actually come out of the kiln. And I'm hoping I can actually show you this, but it's got this beautiful silver swirl. And then we've got some like an edge around just around the outside of the swirl and on, on the inside. Some really cool specks of like a brownie beigey colour. And then... On this side again I'm not 100% sure if you can see it there are some green and blue lines just down this side when I take a photograph and show you you'll really be able to see how that's come out but that's the one that's just come out of the kiln one thing I did forget to mention when you're actually putting pieces into your microwave kiln and using silver or, or any other inclusions like silver um, you can contaminate the inside of your kiln. So the really important thing to do is that after you've used silver or anything in there, that you do a couple of firings afterwards. You can just bung any bits of glass in that you want or, or something you're just playing around with. And um, just check there's no further reactions happening inside your kiln when there's no silver or anything in there. Because the last thing you want to do is spend ages actually making something and then find that it comes out with some although probably very awesome, um, but some unwanted reactions. So a couple of times afterwards, just check your count. Um, so that's the one that actually I did the did earlier, and uh, that's how that's come out, and I'm really happy. There's a couple more that I've done. This one is on like a, a, it's a pale green 
colour and I used a very thin paint pen with this one so the white one that I used before when making this one was a brush head this one was a fine one so I've got a lot clearer and finer swirl within it but again you can see the reaction that's happened and then this one here which I absolutely love the way this one has come out and again this one has actually got a real turquoise look to it again it's very difficult to kind of show you but it's got a turquoise swirl with the silver still exposed which means you get that real sparkle and then the lines in between have actually gone green and an almost Egyptian blue colour so um, if I could really get focus on that that would be amazing but it doesn't appear to be showing up very well here but again I'll put photos on but the effects that you can get with such a simple thing like just a few silver bits of, of dust is just amazing so um, hit up your mates that do silver work and um, or message me and see if you can get hold of just a really small amount of of silver dust to have a go with any messages um, that you want to send me no problem I I'm happy to answer questions for you so again just send me a message through messenger or comment on the tutorial and I will get back to you thanks very much for watching and I, I hope it's helpful Take care. Bye-bye.